It is time for round two of this Rhode Island vs. Texas Penny Box Battle. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure and we've got another Penny Box Battle Hunt today. Again, it's Grunt Diggers vs. RFT and if you watched the first episode, then you know he crushed me. And if you haven't watched it, we had some good finds in that episode, so please check out the playlist down below or I'll put a link up here. That being said, we had a pretty good box of our own. I got 14 weed cents, which is good for me, but he got 25. He also got 5 nicer copper cents, which gave him some extra points. I'm not expecting to win this battle, but you never know if I can score a variety and get right back in it. Of course, a lot of the varieties are minted in Philadelphia, and this box from Rhode Island predominantly has Philadelphia coins in it, so he could get one as well. Looks like I may have jinxed myself. Now, I want to remind everyone that Grunt Diggers has a veterans Facebook page. If you want to check that out, I'll have that link down below as well. And once again, thank you, Grunt Diggers, for allowing me to do this three-box penny challenge. Now you're probably wondering why his box is upside down. He labeled it by looking at the holes in the bottom to make sure it was circulated sense, and it is. So we've got to do a box opening for his box and check the top sides for enders. I've already checked mine. It actually doesn't look like that great of a box. Again, jinxing myself. Who knows, no enders. Looks like there's a lot of uh, shield sense, and I do see a lot of copper, but about what I usually get is half a cup. I'll be curious to see how well my box does. This is a different box than the last box. We'll have to see. As you guys know, I'll be keeping track of the stats right here. Let me do a box opening on his box. We'll check for enders, and then we'll clear all this aside and get right after it. All right, here we go. There's nothing more exciting than opening a box of any denomination and praying to see something fancy schmancy on the ends. Let's take a look. He's got a pretty good amount of copper in this box, but ironically... Unless this is a wheat scent or an older copper scent, I don't see any wheats. And that's going to be a 70, a 73. So not as old as I thought. Either way, let's start cracking into these rolls and I'll bring you in on the first find in this Rhode Island 2 box. Just like last time, kicking it off roll one, we've already got our first wheat scent found and it's going to be a 1952 Philadelphia with some corrosion. Roll number six, second wheat scent of the box. This is going to be a 41, so we can check it for that 1941 DDO, and there's three different ones. One at the date, one predominantly at Liberty, and another one on the motto, which I don't see. But either way, second find, oldest one so far. Well, roll number eight is going to have a couple of good finds for Grunt Diggers because... We've got a wheat scent here, but I've already placed a 1994P under the scope, and it's gonna be the DDR. You can see the doubled columns right here. Unbelievable. It's not in great shape, and in this condition, it's probably only a $20 or $30 coin. They fetch well north of $1,000 in high mint state, but in this condition, it's not that great. Probably an MS60 or so. But it might get some environmental damage on it as well, as you can see. But either way, a 1994 double die reverse is one of the ones we look for. And that's going to count for some good points for grunt diggers. Variety found. Roll eight. And we've got a third wheat scent already as well. And that's going to be a 57 Denver to boot. For those wondering, I went ahead and pulled up the 1994 FS801 DDR, and if we go to the columns down here, you can clearly see we've got the doubled column on the last bay and a partial one on that bay and a small die chip as well. I went ahead and took a look at the price just to make sure, and an MS60 is about a $35 coin. If we got it in MS63, it's a $75 coin, and I would say this is somewhere, if it doesn't get environmental damage, somewhere between an MS60 and a 63. And uh, yeah, $35 to $75 coin right there. Can't get mad at that. Anyway, just wanted to bring that information up so that you understand how valuable some of these one cent modern coins made from zinc can be worth. Roll number 11, weed cent number four. This is gonna be a 1951 Philadelphia. 
Roll number 12 is going to have two more wheat cents for Gwen Diggers. We got a 1945 Philadelphia facing us. Wheat cent number five. And wheat cent number six, I could see it peeking out back here. And it's going to be a 46D. Wheat cent number six. Roll 18. Wheat cent number seven. 1952 Philadelphia. Roll number 21 is going to provide wheat cent number eight. It is obverse facing. 1956 Denver. Roll number 24. Wheat cent number nine is obverse facing and it's a 1936P. So it doesn't look doubled, but we'll double check it just in case. And I don't see any of the doubling on this coin. So this is going to be a 36P, not the DDO, but now the first from the 30s and the oldest of the box. Same roll, wheat cent number 10, 1941. Quick check for any doubling. And I don't see any on this coin. Just wanted to double check because there's a couple of different varieties, but it is not one of them. Roll number 27 is going to have a pretty nice wheat scent for number 11 of the box. It's a last year 1958D, but still has some good luster on it. We'll take it. Roll 33, and I thought the Grunt Diggers Rhode Island box was going to have a little mercy on me. We had gone a few rolls without any wheats, but we're going to have two more right now because I see the reverse of one and a 1938, a few coins behind it. Wheat scent number 12 is a 1953 Denver. And wheat set number 13 is that 1938 Philadelphia. Roll 39, wheat set number 14. 1952 Denver. Roll 45, wheat set number 15. 1954 Philadelphia. Same roll, wheat set 16. 1957 Philadelphia. Roll 46, and there's going to be some more points for this box because uh, we've got a teens wheat scent right here. Wheat scent number 17 is going to be a 1919, I believe, Philadelphia. And it is 1919 teens wheat scent, 102 years old. Wow. Roll 49, wheat scent number 18. And it's going to be a 1946 Philadelphia. Well, that Grunt Diggers Rhode Island penny box has been hunted and it was another dandy. 18 wheat cents in total, a variety, 10 Canadians, 459s, 169S, not the DDO. No real nice copper cents to put on the board this time, although we got five last time. We got 10 wheat cents from the 50s, five from the 40s, two from the 30s, and a 1919 teen sweet scent. On top of that, the Copper Cup was almost filled. I'll plug his stats into the stat sheet and we'll give you a grand total at the end, but we've got to hunt my box and my work's cut out for me. I'd feel pretty confident that I can at least get some double digits maybe, fingers crossed, and have a respectable box. But I'm in fear right now with the Canadians, the variety, and the sheer amount of wheat scents, we're in trouble. Let me start cracking rolls and I'll bring you on the first find of my box. Roll number two of the RFT box, and we're going to kick off with our first wheat scent right here. It's going to be a 1947 Denver. We'll take it on the board. Roll number 10. We've got our second wheat scent. Nothing special, just a 57D, but we need as many as we can get. Figured I'd bring in for a quick update since I might have chosen the wrong box to go against the Rhode Island box and maybe the wrong state to mess with. But, 25 rolls are hunted, I have three Canadians, and only two wheat cents, plus a 59. It's a rough box so far, I hope it heats up. Roll 27, we've got another wheat cent, our third of the box. 1953S, we'll take a 53S, only three wheat cents, and now four Canadians, but I'll take it. Roll 29, wheat cent number four. We're warming up. <laughs> this one's going to be another 57 Denver. 
Roll 31. Wheat set number five is going to be another 1953, but this one from Denver. Roll 34. Wheat set number six. This one, a 44D. Let's check it for that 44D over S, and it is not it. But, believe it or not, this common date wheat scent is my oldest of the box. Well, we just got smoked. We will go quietly into the night on this one because, uh, yeah. Six wheat scents, four Canadians, only 159. And not even a half a cup of copper. One of my more tougher boxes, and uh, I guess it couldn't come at a better time because based on that last box from Rhode Island, it was going to be tough to beat anyway, but holy cow, that was not that great. Nothing old, basically two from the 40s, four from the 50s. Let me go ahead and plug them in the stat sheet and show the inevitable. I'm almost afraid to show you the stat sheet, but the stats are what they are. Grunt Diggers, 71 points in box two, beat out his last box because of that variety. Rob Fine's Treasure, one of my lowest point totals, 13 and a half. He's averaging 67 and a half points per box. I'm only averaging 26 and a half. Absolutely insane. Again, I know this is for fun, but maybe I can get the third box win and at least show some face around here. Grunt Diggers, thank you for sticking it to me. Once again, I appreciate it. In all seriousness, I do appreciate the boxes. They are fun to hunt. A lot more fun to hunt the Northeast boxes or the West Coast versus where I'm at. And I've been hunting my penny boxes pretty consistently for several years now. Maybe they're drying up, which is why I enjoy hunting boxes from other states. Either way, Rhode Island's in the lead. Two rounds to nothing with a comfortable lead. We've got one more video to go. One more set of boxes to hunt. Fingers crossed I can at least show face in that one. If you enjoyed this two box penny box battle hunt against Grunt Diggers, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching.